Tell me if I'm right, the enemy jungler gets pinged out through your track and ganks your laners and they die anyway. Problem is, you can't really find those opportunities to gank and you're a farming jungler and now you need to know how to 1v9. And hey, that's great because this video is the ultimate farming jungler guide for season 14. Every single jungler needs to know how to gank, end of story, but farming junglers need to gank a little bit less because they're focused more on scaling and farming and getting economy a different way. So let's get straight into it. We have a Lilia farming jungler versus a ganky jungler, and we will have a second game where two farming junglers battle it off and one gets 10 CS per minute. So we're going to look at how to fuse all of these jungle principles into the best way to carry as a farming jungler without necessarily ganking too much. And obviously in this game, we're going to have a bit of a deficit. So surprise, surprise, you fall clear down. What I would pay attention to, as always, as a farming jungler, tip number one, when you're pathing in a certain direction, usually bottom lane, have a look to see if they dip out of vision, if they move in a certain way that might indicate that they warded your side which of course the Blitzcrank did, and so our pathing should be over the top and not underneath. You want to remain hidden as much as possible as a farming jungler. The critical aspect about this is that the enemy jungler, the ganking jungler, will feel more of a need to invade you, to impact lanes, to not necessarily play around your ultimate, because let's face it, as a farming jungler, a good sample size of all the farming junglers you saw at the beginning of the video, those are the things that play around their ultimate. We are not too concerned about overforcing ganks. However, we do like to stay out on our first clear if we don't have a gank, Take a scuttle crab and leave deep vision. If the enemy ganky jungler can't find a gank and ganks topside like the Leeson does here, you know straight up that if you base and go to your second spawn of those Krugs, there's a possibility he runs at your face. And I'm happy, you know, not having that happen. So while I'm not a fan of the early little bit of pathing here showing ourselves, while I'm not a fan of hovering a little bit too much for that bottom lane dive, I do like that we paid attention to Leeson where he showed and this allowed us to steal the second camps. Remember, you absolutely must head over to vakayu.gg. I have a free jungle improvement resource as well as a dedicated program where we have jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching VOD libraries, weekly free video content see nowhere else, as well as Q and A's and patch note rundowns, as well as a private jungle discord. And if there's one thing I'm good at, it's making junglers reach their goals as we saw with the record number of people hitting them at the end of season 13. If you want to climb faster than anyone you know, jungle diff every game you play, click the link below or head to Caillou.gg. If someone starts in Raptors, they're gonna respawn around four minutes. If they do Red Krugs Raptors, the Krugs will respawn around 420, the Raptors around, you know, 435, 440, and the Wolves at around five minutes to five minutes 10. So if someone full clears against you as a farming jungler, remember these timers because they're absolutely crucial to your counter jungling. Here's the thing, if the Leeson actually does stay out, take your Krugs, repeat gang top lane, and then, you know, get nothing but go for the grubs, don't feel the need to contest, yes? We've covered this a lot now. You don't need to always go for grubs. Either take an opposite dragon, or if you've already based, which is most likely the case in your games, just sequence down. Even if you have a regular game where you full clear and gank and go back to base and take your Krugs and Raptors and he doesn't steal them and he has prior for the grubs, just keep sequencing. Now what's important here is that if the enemy Lee Sin is smart, he knows you took his bottom side quadrant. He also understands that your red buff is coming up and what ganking and, you know, invading junglers like to do versus farming junglers, invade your second buffs, especially if they know you have to come here to sequence down again. Now, as a personal player of this style, I do prefer, you know, kind of hovering and pulling up my red and then trying to smite it and run away. However, not all farming junglers need to be cowards and you can actually skirmish. Karthus is with exhaust, Lilia's really good skirmisher, a hacker, all you can really do here is one of three things. Time it so that you get your red and smite it and run away. If you can't smite it and run away, you can just leave it and go to the bottom side quadrant and say, you know what, have my red so, doesn't matter to me. Or if you are confident, you can outsmite or at least fight even if they do get the smite, do the battle, do your abilities, hit the buttons. Try and not die is the most important thing here, which sounds like stupid advice, but it's pretty damn obvious. You see, way too many times farming junglers get so egotistical about having this red buff. You see the Lilia understand this in the next phase because obviously Leeson has done topside, invaded and died. Yone, you know, kind of helps you out a little bit. Now, where is he going to go? Big question. Oh my goodness. Amazing. He's going to go to the bottom side. That's because he was just topside. And you do not have the prior to take this fight. I'm sorry. You don't have the reset. You don't want to waste your level six on a stupid situation. You don't want to help a Twisted Fate AD carry when they have an Ezreal for some unforsaken reason. Finish up whatever camps you have left on the map. Make sure you go back to base and buy your haunting guys, get your booties, whatever you can afford. And yes, now you want to use your level six. And that might take many forms. A lane gank on the top side, a good old fashioned tower dive in the bottom lane to get that second dragon. Or if the grubs are up, maybe you want to enforce a fight to use your ultimate. Now again, the misconception that just because you're a farming jungler that you're inherently weak. No, you got to play around prior. In this particular case, we're going to go for the grubs. We have a Yone with an advantage. Blitzcrank is roaming yes and a bottom lane is useless and you have a gold deficit. So sometimes you might need to bring forward that big old second dragon fighter like to tell you guys to take to take control of the game. 
Bring it forward to now. Use your ultimate with your spike. Now, how do we know our spike is good? Because we've stopped the lease and getting too much. Obviously, the map has been kind to us in that respect. But even if he's fed here, make the executive decision. Can I fight this and win it with Yone's combination, the synergy between champions? Or can I not? Twisted Fate was moving up. Braum rotates over. Cool. Free win. Good fight for us. But we still have a gold deficit. So as always, when you win fights and gain objectives, if there's nothing you can really do on this particular side, go counter juggling. Say, you know what? I'm going to take all of your top side. Now, with farming junglers, I've covered basically a lot of what you want to look out for in this early game phase. Again, we'll look at everything in the next example as well. And you might have to give up your bottom side dragon in this instance. You know that you don't really have an ADC and the Ezreal's still really, really fed, but your Yone is fed and you are fed. Ignore the KDA, understand that at this particular stage, you are strong over the enemy jungler. Everything we do is to do that. So now we can go ahead and maybe we take some camps. We acknowledge that map is king and we're not going to overforce anything. We're waiting for our ultimate. Use any prio again that you have to get into the denial, the jungle denial. Can I take your camps? Can I take an objective? Can I kill you? If you don't have it, what are we doing? Sequencing and waiting for ultimate and looking to make a play off of that. Now, here's where I like to put a little bit of an investment in time. Because your sequencing has become quite fast already at this stage as we transition out of the early game into the mid game, you're not going to always have camps popping up with that kind of frequency. You're going to take them quickly and then you've got a lot of time before that whole entire map comes up again which means you can afford to counter jungle. Play some vision, try getting Gezreal, loop back around. Can I get mid lane? Never mind. Can I steal this rub off? Yes. Leeson's not really in the picture and I don't really care if he does take my red side here. I'm willing to invest in shutting down the Ezreal, killing the Blitzcrank as well and shoving this lane out so we can get some plates before 14 minutes. Now, fortunately, we're not really going to get that many here, but the most important thing is because we invested in time, we understood our sequencing, what camps were up, what camps were down, and we had stolen so much from the Lee Sin, we're okay with a 20 CS lead, killing their bottom lane, and shoving the hell out of that wave. And you also know because Lee Sin took the dragon and then sequenced all the way up and would have had to go back to base, you 100% know that that guy's going to have to come back down to the bottom side. So instead of falling back to your blue side camps, think aggressively. And now you're thinking, well, Vakai, aren't you talking about like scaling junglers? And again, same principle. Just because you're scaling doesn't mean you can't come online sooner. The whole point of everything I told you was to have a gold advantage right now, a jungle advantage right now, so that when you can actually make this aggressive play with or without your support, you're going to be able to win it. If you over, you know, exert yourself and you die and you give shutdowns yourselves, then that was not the right play. But as I've been saying in the coaching classes and the private discord, it is fundamental that you understand that 50 minutes to 20 minutes is when you can totally win games in the mid game in the season. So what does that mean for your jungling in the early phases? You have to get to that time, as you see now, we're at 50 minutes ahead. You have to get to that time in control. You have to get to that time with some objectives, whether it's a grub or two, some dragons, a herald. It doesn't really matter. You just have to have some sort of control on the map. If you're behind in CS, behind in KP, behind in everything, you haven't used your ultimate properly, you didn't hang around to gank the right lanes, then you're not going to be in this position. And that truly was the backbreaking play. You see the Lilia gets a few more kills, snacks herself up a Penta kill as I've been showing you, and they win. I will leave a link to the match history in the description below and you guys can have a look at the gold graph they were behind. Let's jump to the Hecarim game now. And as you can see, there is a bit more adversity. We are against a Graves, who's also farming jungle, but a different style of aggression can be for you. This is why we always ward that opposite buff, in this case being the blue buff on the top side of the map. This is very, very important because if you don't place this ward against your Kindreds, Graves, Jarvins, Nidalees, and Shakos, you're gonna get invaded and lose stuff. In fact, you could have even been invaded by the Lee Sin. And so while we love having those wards for deep vision, you know, to track the enemy jungler's second rotation, it's also important to use one of those procs to actually, you know, track if you're gonna get invaded because once you've done your red side quantrant, now we can vertical jungle and go and steal his stuff. But don't let this problem with your sequencing make you think, oh no, now I can't get all my farm. 10 CS per minute is just a goal, a dream for dreamers. No, be a dreamer. You can still get it. Don't let anything compromise your ethics when it comes to destroying jungle monster lives. Except, of course, a bottle main gank. Make sure you do gank that if you can. You got a nice little angle of approach, you know, while you're in his jungle. And then go back to his grom. Because if that sucker had actually decided to cut you off, he would have shown his face already and brought back the milk. But that's gone. The milk is warm. And we're going to trade sides of the map. So it's a little messy, but in the end, we go back to base with an assist. The Graves goes back to base without an assist skill issue. But you have the same CS, and now you're going to look for that grab fight. And here's where that crucial fundamental principle comes into play, especially with Hecarim at the moment. He's strong enough to climb. No one who's playing Hecarim can complain that you can't climb. You've had him for three seasons in the meta. He's still damn strong when you play correctly. Watch this. Give up the grubs. Go back to the grub. Go now and say, I'm going to sequence down. If the grave shows himself and you see him top lane, uh, you know, go take his grump. 
And then your six, which means you can use your six on the bottom lane, which means now you have a cohesive lead and you're already dominating and it's only seven minutes into the game. And sure, now Graves is going to show up and you might have to give up the dragon, but what do you not have to give up? Move your camps, so clear your quadrant. We only leave our sequencing, we only leave the camps when there is an objective to snack for free because the enemy jungle is being dumb, or a gank we can have like we showed earlier when it's a freebie because a great angle of approach, or there's an 80% probability you can go ahead and, you know, kill a mid laner, even if it's 3v1, know your kit, know your limits, understand your champion, and make sure you're making those ganks. And it always seems like something quite obvious to say, guys, make sure you're ganking, but I still see it way too often with farming junglers, you do not gank enough, you do not play around your ultimate, you do not react to situations where you can actually leave the camp and get some kills. You do not react to a situation where you can just give up the objective and get some camps. That balance is critical for farming junglers. And the thing is, when you've got a CS lead and a KP lead over the enemy jungler, and in fact you have an experience lead, these enemy junglers always feel the pressure. If you're Karthus who's suddenly level 9, enemy jungler's level 7, you don't have to wait till 25 minutes to come online. These strategies in this video from the Lilia and the Hecarim, in terms of competing, contesting, using ultimates, when you pick a chance to rotate, when you pick a chance to actually fight, this is what defines you as a farming jungler. If you succeed in these reads, and you can see them on your screen, you're dominating, and it's not even that difficult to do. The enemy jungler has to gank, has to invade, has to exert pressure. You just have to make sure you're making the right jungle decision all the time. Sure, you're allowed a few mistakes here and there, but I mean, it is a stressful role to have all this decision making, but you understand the point, yes? It's really not about ganking or farming or rotating. It's always a balance of all of these things, just knowing when you can compete for stuff, rotate to stuff, and enemy ganking and aggressive junglers, they take higher risks because they don't have that fallback of naturally scaling. But farming junglers do. And now while I understand the Lydia had free real estate after the grub fight to go ahead and counter jungle, the Hecarim was a little bit more greedy with this. So I'm not always an advocate for doing what he did here. You know, kind of bait your team and you can see this situation. You've got a big ass lead, but this game now, despite the fact that you are all winning, goes on for 30 damn minutes because these kinds of plays just stall things and make things worse for your team. They throw leads. Another farming jungle tip, as you've noticed, is we continue to sequence, but after the Raptors, we take the RNG Scuttle. It's free. We know Graves is sequencing down as well. We know we can get there before him. Outside in rule, take the thing furthest away from your jungle before you fall back to your jungle, because now it's gone, and they can't cross that river and walk to your Krugs to compete against you, can they? No, they can't. So you can do your Krugs relaxing, knowing you got a Scuttle Crab. And because those enemy junglers now, again, don't know what to do. Ah, oh, I lost the Scuttle Crab. I know he's on the Krugs. I need to fight. They force it. They take these high-risk plays. And always, with your tracking, if you can shadow, we know Graves is going down, I'm going to go down as well, I will be present in case he does something so I can react to it and be immediate with my impact. Which, of course, we did, and we have a Galio as well, so that's nice. And now you see this investment in time again, because the camps haven't yet spawned, the sequencing is so quick, we go and clear vision. We go and look to see where people are. We have a little bit of a cheeky alien probe. Where can I give you my impact that gives you the greatest pleasure, teammates? And then of course, when you see the Graves top lane, we rotate to that as well. And what this does is create prior for the objective that we want to snack. So in this particular case, we're going to go for those four grubs. And now at this stage, it's about how strong do you feel? If you do not think that you can contest for this dragon because your bot is behind, your mid is behind, simply do another sequence. Do your Gromp, do your Wolves, do your Red Side Quadrant to prevent counter jungling quickly. Nice quick sequence. Go back to base and hold. If, however, you happen to be a champion that's pretty damn strong at this particular stage, which you are, and you know you can rotate to this because you're also using your F keys to watch the state of bottom lane, do it. Walk on over, push mid wave, and kill everybody and take the dragon. Nice triple kill. Alternatively, what you could do as you watch that occur is push mid lane. So if it's before 14 minutes and you could, you know, with your four, five, six grubs, shove mid a little bit and, you know, take some plates before that dings, Go ahead and do that as well. Just escape to the top side, counter jungle or fall back to your blue side quadrant. There is more risk with that play, but I do kind of like that in situations where you know where the enemy champions are. In this case, we didn't really. We just knew we could kill everybody, so we did that. But do factor that in for your early game to mid game transition decision making. Now, ultimately, this guy will have the highest KP in the game. He will have 10 CS per minute. And a large chunk of that is a skill set that I really love in my own game style. I don't always, you know, say those kinds of things, but I really do love that my mid-game farming is pristine. And it's through this mechanism that I call the swoop method that the Hecarim's doing right now on your screen. Watch it. If my team is pushing lanes, pushing and sieging, I'm going to farm a quadrant in their direction. I'm going to shove up with them, create the prior to take the enemy jungler's camps, push other waves to force TBs and rotations, fall back to my own camps, cross the river and do it again, 
get into his jungle, make picks where I can make picks as you would have seen, and you're watching this go through really, really quickly, just pretend your beautiful hunting eagle is swooping from side to side across the map. If someone's in your way, you kill them, then you take some food, and then you take their food away from the other nest because you're cruel, and then you go and push the wave again, you fall back to your jungle camp, you swoop again, kill other people over pushing. It's a very powerful thing to do, and now you're saying he can only do it, and she can only do it because it's Hecarim and Lilia respectively. Now, I do this in Zyra, you can do this in Karthus. What is your gimmick that allows you to do this? My particular case is Zyra, it's about farming over walls. So I can swoop without having to move around the walls because I can just quickly take them and carry on moving into the enemy jungle, into the lanes to shove it out. If you happen to be at Karthus, it doesn't matter if you're basically doing something else because your ultimate will have the global impact. So whatever champion you play to enact this swoop method to get all of this mid-game farm, to get all of the shove that you need to get that Baron Pryo, think about it in terms of your champion's unfair advantage on the map and leverage that to be able to do this. And I know how it works because I just got a Balveth main who has the lowest damage I've ever seen for a Balveth main to Diamond by basically focusing on this kind of strategy. Which is wild to think because Balbets are usually kind of crazy, but it's really the ultimate way to play this game. And if you happen to be a little bit curious about how to actually apply this to your own MMR to get that 81% KP and that 10 CS per minute with that high damage, I hope this farming jungle video has helped you, but this video on your screen now will take it to the next level.